I call Julian Genta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so this bill is one part of the government's not a capital gains tax tax that was announced around the time of the budget. And the Green Party is supporting that whole uh, pa policy package, if you will, um, because it is taking a step in the right direction. But um, we don't believe that this bill really is as good as it could have been, unfortunately. Um, what the bill does is it starts the very first steps towards getting information on what is actually happening in the housing market. Now, this has been a very long time coming. It's made it very difficult for us to assess what exactly is causing un the underlying inflation in house prices in Auckland, because we simply don't have enough information. I remember asking the governor of the Reserve Bank about this um, at, you know, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, when he came before the Finance and Expenditure Committee and asked if they had information on what proportion of sales uh, were to overseas buyers. And that's just to understand how much foreign capital is coming into the market, because that can be one of the factors in, uh, in price inflation. So it's really important to have an understanding of whether or not that is making a difference. And we simply didn't have the data at all. So we didn't know to what extent house price inflation was caused by supply problems, or whether it was caused by demand side problems like the influence of speculators or a whole heap of foreign capital coming in, bidding up our market. And the Reserve, governor of the Reserve Bank at that time said they did not have that information. They would very much like to have that information. And it required action from government in order for them to collect that information. So finally, a year and a half later, we have a bill that is going to start collecting that information. And it is very useful. And that's why the Green Party will be supporting this bill. Um, why is it important to understand this? It's because there's multiple factors at play in housing affordability. Everybody, I think, agrees that it's incredibly important for every person in New Zealand to have a warm, safe, secure, dry place to call home. And that's fundamental. And it's important that uh, people aren't prevented from having this because of not having enough money to pay the rent or to pay the mortgage. It's also important that we don't have an overvalued um, bubble in Auckland because it the amount of debt tied up in housing in Auckland becomes a liability for the whole economy. And that's certainly something the governor of the Reserve Bank has been worried about for quite a while now. And we're finally seeing some very small steps in the right direction by this government, but they have failed to take action for a significant number of years. Uh, back in 2010, Treasury was lobbying the government to implement a capital gains tax, uh, which they failed to do, and of course that has had, would have had impact on demand in the Auckland housing market, it might have limited the bubble more. Obviously it's not a silver bullet, it's not the only solution, but um, we do know for very understandable economic reasons that when you don't have a tax loophole on housing as we currently have had uh, and continue to have to a certain extent, um, then there's uh, a perverse incentive to put more money into houses rather than into the productive sectors of the economy. Uh, and there's a perverse incentive for people uh, to own more houses. And when you don't have protection for renters, there's also a perverse incentive for people to become landlords um, and not look after their properties, uh, to make a loss on the rent, um, because they're anticipating future um, capital gains which won't be subject to tax. Um, it's simply not right that people who go to work in a hospital or at an engineering firm or whatever else they're doing, that they have to pay tax on their salary, but people who sit back, make a hundred uh, grand simply by flipping houses in Auckland over a period of a few months, pay no tax on that income. It's, it's, it's not right, it's a distortion, and it's something that we could fix and we clearly understand how to fix. And, and the relevant um, information that's going to be collected uh, because of the changes in, in this bill has to do with understanding how much money is coming in from overseas. And that's important to understand exactly what proportion of the house price inflation is being driven by that um, 
incoming capital. Lots of other comparable jurisdictions have already started to impose things like a stamp duty or a limit on um, foreign buyers in order to protect um, their own housing markets. And that's something that we have failed to do in New Zealand. The previous speaker, Mr. Bishop, um, insinuated, I think, that um, opposition parties bringing this up is uh, just simply politicking and it's playing on racism and fear of migrants. As a migrant myself, I can say that that's certainly not why the Green Party has a policy which would limit um, you know, sales of property to citizens and residents. It's not because we're afraid of migrants. We've been lobbying for um, an increase to the refugee quota. We have a very um, open and tolerant immigration policy. But it is important for the sovereignty of New Zealand that the people who are buying property here have a stake in the future of the country. And it's for that reason that we'd say it's important to be a resident or a citizen. And it's entirely possible uh, for many people uh, to become a resident and a citizen even if they were not born in New Zealand. So it has nothing to do with racism. And the fact is that we know that in comparable cities all over the world, uh, like Sydney, Vancouver, City of London, Hong Kong, um, places where uh, house price inflation has been equally high or higher than in Auckland, um, that it is driven to a certain extent by capital coming out of China because it's a very big country. It's a very big market. And so there's nothing specifically against the Chinese. It's just acknowledging the fact that there is a lot of capital coming out of China looking for safe ha haven, looking for safe investments. And given the uh, tax-free status um, of on housing in New Zealand, it's, it's certainly a very safe place for them to invest money. And, you know, the issue for us is that... Um, it actually, it starts to impact the ability of New Zealanders to have a safe, warm, dry, secure place to live. So it's important that we understand the problem, and in order to understand the problem, we have to have the information. That's what the governor of the Reserve Bank had asked for a year and a half ago. Uh, that's what the Green Party asked for. And this bill starts to do that, so we're going to support it, but I have to say that it really is not perfect. And um, I think the single biggest problem with the bill is this main home exemption. So um, what we heard from officials and other submitters is that making an exception for a person's main home adds complexity to the rules. Why would you want to add complexity to the rules? Um, it limits the amount of information that's available about property transactions. Um, and so uh, for that reason, most of the opposition MPs on the select committee argued against the main home exemption. We put that in our minority view. Uh, when it comes to tax and regulations, simpler is better. Uh, putting in exemptions just creates unnecessary complexity and loopholes, which can then be gamed. So uh, uh, the previous speaker, um, Mr. Bishop, said that there was no point in collecting data because um, people for whom it was their main home would be exempt from the tax, the Bright Line tax. Um, but that doesn't mean there's no point in collecting the information. It's certainly not onerous to collect the information. I would say that more information is better. And I don't think it's credible to say that people are going to be uh, terribly worried uh, that they might have to pay a tax simply because they have to provide their IRD number. It's just not credible. It's not a big deal. And it's certainly not a reason for making more complex legislation, which is going to be more difficult to enforce and going to, is going to leave us with less information that we can then use to analyze what's going on in the property market. So for that reason, uh, the Greens are not happy with the bill as drafted. And we put that uh, to the government that a simpler Regulation is better, more information is better, people are not going to be terrified by the fact that they have to provide their IOD number, and given that they're not going to be taxed, it's simply, it doesn't make sense that we would say to them, you don't need to provide your IOD number, we're not going to collect this data because we're afraid that you might be scared, you have to pay a tax, you don't have to pay. That's just ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, that's in summary the Green Party's view on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.